means is that um, when you have four or five companies in charge of disseminating public information, that is a very, very, very dangerous place to be in. Uh, I think, I can't remember the name, it's just escaped me, that he's, I think he's an Israeli philosopher who tweeted this quote when Trump was silenced, which was, uh, when you can silence the king, you are the king. Um, and what you effectively have now is these companies who can effectively silence someone, and that is it. And there's no recourse, there's no way of, of, of protesting, they decide. So a good example of this, and Bloom comes when somebody can just shut down an account or they can suppress stories. For instance, during the American presidential election, there was a, lot, a number of allegations about Joe Biden's son and corruption allegations, all the rest of it. Now, this, this is absolutely true. Twitter suppressed that story. The New York Post, America's oldest newspaper, ran a story about it and Twitter suppressed it. They suppressed the account, they suppressed the story. And that happened during an election year. So, <laughs> This is very, 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 very dangerous stuff. I'm not pretending I know the yeah. answers to this. Francis, but well, the problem, can I just finish my oh, point? Yeah, sorry, sorry. yeah, but the problem is when you have these companies which have this huge amount of power, whether it's, for instance, YouTube. So, for instance, YouTube uh, took down or well, deleted Talk Radio's uh, account. When Talk Radio uh, are a company regulated by Ofcom, and the reason they did it is because they, crit they had on experts and they platformed people who criticized lockdown. That contravened YouTube's rules, bang, gone. These people are dictating what is and what isn't acceptable to talk about. I just find it a very worrying state of affairs. That's all. Go for it, Gronje. Well, no, but I just, uh, so Twitter obviously is a very big platform, but people are getting so much more of their news now from independent, smaller mm. news YouTube channels you know, that are increasingly far right, that get so many more views than mainstream news. I mean, in America, Republicans are much more likely to get their news from independent uh, vloggers than they are from, you know, mainstream news channels. So I do think it's just, I mean, obviously, the internet is fucked and destroying us all. Yeah. But I do think there are lots of other platforms available online i think twitter is quite like i think because we're all in this this is our bubble but i just think mm. there's so many other very toxic platforms for the very sort of people who say that there being no platform on twitter they have this huge megaphone in other areas and i just find it funny that you have you know these senators giving like speaking in Cong or senators, these Congress people talking in Congress mm. with wearing face masks saying censored. <laughs> and they're on the news. So I just think the whole idea of being censored and, uh, you know, no platform and all that stuff. I, you know, I, I think it's it's become like a, yeah, like a, a badge of honor. And it doesn't have any meaning, I think, anymore, because there's just so many platforms nowadays that's an interesting take that there doesn't have any meaning anymore to being censored when we um as obviously comedians are in the business of having to rep at least have answer that question once a year to a journalist or mm -hmm. someone asking us what we think about freedom of expression freedom of speech now I, 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 obviously we missed that week when it was the busy week julian but um mm -hmm. twitter's shares went down um with them banning trump mm -hmm. Which was hilarious because it was it, it made you think. Well, what is that? Why they didn't ban him before? You know, and I was questioning that, like why why the you know the shares would have come down at that point. So that was quite frightening and also um, quite I found it quite hilarious at the same time. It's just really <laughs> who are these Trumpies that are keeping twi you know Twitter shares alive? I, oh, I was a bit worried that I might have to change the name to Let's Kill Insert Platform here. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the problem is, is like, so with Gronje saying, like, you know, there's lots of different platforms. There was a platform for people on the right to use, and then it got nuked. <laughs> so it was just like, well, you know, and then they took it down. And their, their reasoning was, well, you know, it was, you know, it was filled with hate and racism. I think that's every social media platform, let's be honest. I don't think anybody ever goes on Twitter and goes, oh, this is going to cheer me up. 
I do. <laughs> I think Carla's problem was the clay, they just Bit, the subtext was text. They were like, come be racist and troll mm. people on our platform. But if you've got no goodies, like everybody needs an enemy and why Parler wasn't, because it was just all the right wing people who like trolling people went to Parler. So they had nobody to troll. So they had just, should you know, been a little bit more subtle and it probably would have been fine. I, th I think like, obviously they're both just awful like mm. uh, platforms just basically looking to make money like twitter isn't a force for good it just is a platform that wants to make money and they kept trump on there for as long as possible because it brought so much you know traffic to the the site and they took him off the only reason they took him off was okay his worth to us now isn't worth if he possibly instigates an actual terrorist attack and that's the only reason he got taken off and possibly when things cool back down again he'll be back up 